can give you a figure that'll blow your mind, I think. I bought my first stock when I was 11 years old. It was the first quarter of 1942. I spent $114.75. Three, three shares, 114.75. If I put that 114 into the S&P 500 at that time and reinvested the dividends, think of a figure as to what it might be, would be worth today. Oh man, $400,000 today, one person's lifetime. I'll That's the power of strategic investing over a lifetime. You can beat 90% of stock market investors without even needing to choose individual stocks. Imagine creating a carefully thought out plan that can turn a small $250 investment in the stock market into an impressive $10,000 or even $100,000 over time, not all at once. Don't worry, it's the same strategy, just adjust the numbers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some easy to follow ways to smartly invest your money. Investing in stocks might seem overwhelming, especially if you're new. Handling company shares, dividends, reports, and charts, it can be a lot. You're also competing with Wall Street experts who know the market inside out. But guess what? You can stand your ground, and I'll show you how. Stay tuned, and by the end of this video, you'll have a solid plan to outperform most investors. No need to be an analysis expert or a trading pro. You you can rearrange your business empire, which you own through that little portfolio that you have. You can rearrange that you know, at a moment's notice with practically no cost. It's a huge advantage, which people turn into a disadvantage. Uh, there is nothing about the price action of the stock that tells you whether you should keep owning. What tells you whether you should keep owning it is what you expect the company to do in the future versus the price at which it's selling now compared to the other opportunities of businesses that you think you know equally well and make that same comparison. And that's all there is to owning stocks. Most people think that investing in the stock market means picking stocks that could become really successful, like finding the next big company like Netflix. But to predict these big changes, you need to know a lot about the industry. You do research and sometimes you get lucky. If you're not ready to spend a lot of time on the stock market, this might not be the right choice for you. Trying to do this could cost you a lot of money on finding good stocks, but usually, the ones who make the money are the ones selling the strategies, not the investors. It can be fun to pick stocks, but you need to be careful. Did you know that many people buy stocks after a company becomes famous, rather than when it's new and exciting? By that time, the good chance to make money is often gone. But there are ways to find and invest in these companies before they become big. And you can make a lot of money that way. However, if you don't want to spend a lot of time learning about stocks and investing, this might not be the right approach for you. Picking the right stocks takes time and the ability to control your feelings, because emotions can make it hard to succeed. Even if you're not great at picking individual stocks, it doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in the stock market at all. There are other ways to do it. You, the S&P 500 index has been the massive outperformer over the nine and a half years of the bet. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll absolutely kill every one of the fund of funds. And bear in mind, each one of the fund of funds had a strong financial incentive to pick the best funds they could find 10 years ago. I mean, it meant real right, money five, to five funds. Yeah, so it, 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 it was overwhelming. and. Uh, uh, passive investment, you know, I've, I've written about it. A passive investment in aggregate is going to beat aggregate, active investment because of fees. What you should do is put your money into exchange traded funds, ETFs. They match how much risk you're comfortable with. Imagine an ETF as a big group of company shares. Instead of just buying shares from one company like Apple, you can invest in a fund that has shares from Apple, Disney, Facebook, and Amazon. If you only invest in Apple and something bad happens to the company, your investment could lose a lot of value. To make your money grow steadily and safely, it's better to choose a plan that tries to lower risks and increase potential profits. Usually, it's good to invest in three to seven different ETFs that cover different things. But if you're new to investing and only have $100 to start with, you can begin with just one or two ETFs. As you get more money to invest, you can add more ETFs to your plan. 
It's really important to understand how much risk you can handle because it helps you make smart choices about where to put your money. ETFs offer different types of investments in many areas, and the ones you pick should match how much risk you're comfortable with. This way, you're following the main ideas of how Apple thinks about investing. By spreading your investment across different ETFs, you lower the chance of one company's performance hurting your entire investment. Instead, you have a better chance of making money from a mix of different companies. Consider investing in funds that mirror the overall stock market performance, like the S&P 500. These funds track the top 500 companies. So, if the market rises, your investment does too. But remember, investing carries risk, and you might not make a profit. If you're ready to take bigger risks and want a share of popular high-growth stocks, consider a tech ETF like VGT, or explore growth stock ETFs for startups, healthcare ETFs for the medical field, and emerging market ETFs for foreign opportunities. ETFs let you invest in entire industries, avoiding the need to choose between specific companies like McDonald's or Domino's. To find the companies within an ETF, you can search for the ETF's official holdings or composition report. Many ETF providers like iShares, Vanguard, and SPDR offer these reports on their respective websites. Alternatively, financial news websites and financial data providers might also provide updated lists of the holdings within specific ETFs. Just search for the name of the ETF, followed by Holdings or Composition, to find the information you're looking for. Generally, stock market ETFs are safer than ones focused on specific sectors like tech. The first type offers more diversity, which can lower risk. Think about whether you want more risk for more potential growth or steady progress. Your goals should match your comfort with risk. I'll soon show you examples of turning $100 into $10,000 or more. Before that, let me explain how you can invest. To buy stocks, you use interactive brokers. Pick one with fair fees to make the most of your money. Note that this video isn't sponsored by interactive brokers. They don't support it and we gain no benefits. Interactive Brokers is a common online brokerage known for low fees. He forgot to say exactly when you were going to get the two in the, from the bush, and he forgot to say what interest rates were that you had to measure this against. But if he'd given those two factors, he would have defined investment for the next 2,600 years. Now that you have a grasp of the basics of investing, your comfort level with risk, and the method of finding ETFs, Let's delve into the process of transforming a $250 portfolio into an impressive $10,000. This journey involves a combination of math and historical trends in the stock market. Over time, the stock market has exhibited an average annual growth rate of approximately 10%. However, it's crucial to remember that this growth isn't consistent with a steady 10% every single year. Some years witness significant increases, while others might experience modest declines. It's important to note that, even though the stock market generally rises over extended periods, some individuals still face losses. This typically occurs due to a lack of adequate knowledge or attempts to generate quick profits by trading in trendy stocks. Emotional factors can also come into play, leading to hasty and often unfavorable decisions. Luckily, you're in a good position to handle this situation because you have the right information. To turn your starting $250 into a much bigger $10,000, it's important to be patient and let your investments grow over time. When you have put your money into the stock market and keep your investments for a long time, they have an opportunity to take advantage of the market's historical pattern of going up. With the knowledge you've learned, you can make smart decisions and avoid common mistakes that might cause money troubles. $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and I paused for a moment to let the audience try and guess how much it amount to, and it would come to $51 million now. And the only thing you had to really believe in then is that America would win the war and that you didn't have to worry about what stock to buy. You didn't have to worry what day to get in and out. You didn't, you didn't know the Federal Reserve would exist, <laughs> whatever it might be. Let's start with a safe investment plan. Imagine you begin by putting a small $250 at first, and then you keep adding that same amount every month. This makes your yearly investment $3,000.
This method involves putting this money into a type of investment called an exchange traded fund or ETF, which is going to follow the performance of the whole stock market. You could pick an ETF like the SPY. The goal is to copy how well the entire stock market is doing. By putting $250 each month into this ETF, which is expected to give you a 10% return each year, your investment becomes $10,000 in just three years. It's important to remember that here, you're not trying to pick single stocks or guess which one will do best. Instead, the aim is to do as well as the overall market. Three main things really matter in how much money you can make in the stock market. How much you invest, how long you leave your money invested, and how much your investments grow in value. As time goes on, the period your money is invested in gets longer, which can help your investment grow even more through something called compounding. Plus, if you put more money over time, your potential to make more money grows too. Finally, the amount your investments increase in value plays a big part in how much your investment grows overall. If you stick to this smart investment plan and look at the long term, you could see your investment grow a lot, even without having to find the best individual stocks. The more money you invest, the greater your potential to earn. But what's intriguing is that your returns don't increase in a straight line. Instead, they follow a curve. This concept hinges on several factors. The amount of money you invest, the duration it remains invested, and the quality of your interest rates. When these elements align favorably, your returns improve significantly. But it doesn't stop there. Your money enters a process of compounding, wherein your initial investment generates gains, and those gains, in turn, generate their own gains. This creates a snowball effect, accelerating your earnings. The longer you maintain this cycle, the faster your money multiplies. Entering the world of investment can seem daunting, especially during economic downturns like the current recession. The thought of witnessing your stock market holdings decline can be unsettling. However, keep in mind that substantial gains aren't achieved in a matter of months. True wealth is accumulated over the long term. This journey is about embracing the potential of consistent growth, even in the face of short-term setbacks. So, while opening your portfolio and seeing red might be disheartening, remember that focusing on the long game is what will truly bring financial success. If you are not a professional investor, if, you're, if your goal is not to manage money in such a way as to get a significantly better return than the world, uh, then I believe in extreme diversification. I mean, if it, so I believe 98 or 99 percent, maybe more than 99 percent of people who invest uh, should extensively diversify and not trade. So it, that leads them to an index fund type of a decision with very low cost. Because all they're going to do is own a part of America. And they made a decision that owning a part of America is worthwhile. When the prices of things you might want to buy suddenly drop a lot, it's like finding a great opportunity to buy them. This is a smart approach because when the prices crash, you can get really good investments for much cheaper. This is especially important if you're interested in the fast-changing world of technology. Investing in technology companies can be exciting because they can shape the future. One option you can think about is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, or VGT. This is a collection of tech-related investments. VGT has done really well in the past years, growing around 18.5% every year on average. Over five years, it grew about 20% each year. Even though what happened before might not happen again, focusing on one area like tech has the potential for bigger rewards. But it also comes with more risks. Imagine if you put that $250 every month and got around 18.5% back each year. In just three years, your investments could become $10,000. The cool part is that if you invest even more money, you can make even more profit. The key is to stick to your plan and invest regularly. It's important to understand that while choosing individual stocks can be fun, it's not always the best way to make money. Are you investing to have fun or to make money? If you like picking stocks, be prepared to spend a lot of time and effort to learn how to do it right. This is where learning about finances can really help. It's like getting a secret weapon that lets you compete with big investors without needing a lot of money. The secret is to put your money into the right kinds of investments. When you invest in well-managed funds, you're letting experts handle the hard work of investing. In short, when prices drop a lot, it's a good idea to buy smartly. 
The tech sector is exciting, and options like VGT show its potential. But remember, the future is uncertain, even if the past can teach us something. The key to success is to keep investing consistently, which can turn small investments into big savings. Picking stocks can be interesting, but it takes a lot of learning. Learning about finances can help level the playing field and let the experts manage your money for you.